Hey YouTube, Flackjacker1000 here, and finish my slide. Well, just kidding. Uh, that's just a. Uh, I know I got your hopes up, but uh, I really haven't had time to finish the slide yet, but because uh, I've been really busy lately. But uh, this is just a slide that I got from a toy bread M9 that I. Uh, it just happened to fit, but uh, yeah, it, I, I did that because it looked. It made me. Uh, see what I'm trying to sort of go and see make sure that a uh, slide actually slides on here shows me that uh, my rails are straight so yeah they're pretty straight it slides on perfectly so anyway this tutorial is on the the sear spring and kind of what the purpose of that what function does it serve and all that so <clears throat> The sear spring, I know a lot of you are wondering, because I remember when I first uh, learned about the 1911, I really didn't understand it that much. And this is the sear spring right here. And you see there's three, it's, it's also considered a leaf spring, because I guess it looks, I don't know, like a leaf, I don't know. It doesn't look like a leaf. But um, there's three parts of the spring. And what each of those parts do is this first one right here, pushes against the sear which allows it to um, lock into place on the hammer and I'll show you in a minute and the middle one is to push up and uh, in on the disconnector to move it up and over and then the last one over here is for the grip safety right here to give some spring to go outward and reset itself so I'll go ahead and take this apart and show you how it goes in there let's see uh, right now I, uh, this pin slides in and out so I have some tape on it so let me just take that off hold on okay that pin should slide right out. Or not. Oh, that's why. Okay. I don't really need to have that pin out, but it'd be helpful. So let me just get this pencil and knock it out. Okay. I think I thought I had it. <laughs> okay. So I got the the grip safety pin out. And uh I went ahead, I don't know if I've shown that where I've uh, contoured it to make it, make it rounded on the sides. But anyway, let me put the um, sear spring in for you. <clears throat> so as you see, we have the sear, and that's uh, and the disconnector in the middle. And the sear spring goes in there with the little uh, prong part on the left and that goes on the sear as you see right in there on the left and it's pushing against the sear a little bit and then the middle one is when it goes in it's pushing there you go see that the disconnector pop up that pushes up on the disconnector because of the angled piece on the disconnector and then out or pushes the disconnector in toward the gun and then this last one here is to push on the uh, the grip safety which let me put that on to hold the spring on and then oh, yeah. mm -hmm. 
Okay. Alright, so the group safety just goes on uh, right over it. Okay, so. Oh, my uh, strut needs to be centered first. Okay, so there you can see it gave it some spring. And that's what you want. So that uh, when the pin's holding it in, and this is up, you should have, uh, well, it, it'll do, do that. So it, when your hand goes on it, it uh, the grip safety moves out of the way of the, the, the trigger bar inside there. There's the trigger bar, you see, and it, you can't really see the the grip safety in there, but uh, I already explained the grip safety there on another video. So let me let me take out the parts and show you a better view of how the grip safety work. I mean, the sear spring works, because I know even though it's simple to me, to a lot of you, uh, y'all are still learning. So. Uh, I have to give you the benefit of the doubt that you don't know because a lot of you probably don't so that you can learn how it functions <clears throat> oh I forgot to mention the the middle spring not only does it serve to push on the disconnector it also pushes uh, the trigger back out toward, the, toward like this it the spring pushes it toward your finger so it resets the trigger like that let me set up all the stuff outside the gun. Um, where did my disconnector go? Okay. 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 Oh, what's <laughs> that? it in the wrong direction. Okay, there we go. Goes right there. And then um we got the hammer. Goes right there. Well, there goes my hammer strut. I didn't the pin fell out. I don't really need that anyway. Okay, so uh then you have you have the grip safety, but that's not really going to fit on here. I don't think. I'll, I'll try it anyway. Oh, okay. So it kind of does. Um. Okay. So anyway, here's here's how the grip safety works. I didn't mean the grip safety, I meant the sear spring. So the sear spring will be it'll focus. The back part right there, that one right there is going to be against the grip safety. You see it pushing on the grip safety right there. The middle part will be pushing against the Disconnector. Let's see if it'll focus, so you can see it. There we go. So you see that angled part on the disconnector right in the middle there, right there. That piece that I'm pushing on. The middle middle part of the sear spring pushes on that angled piece. This hopefully it'll focus right here. That's perfect if it focuses. Okay, there we go. So, the middle part, you see, pushes on that angled piece right there, which pushes it out and up. So that'll reset on the sear right there. And also, um, it'll push on the, since the, hand, I mean, since the trigger bar will be sitting on the disconnector, the middle spring, when it pushes the disconnector out, oh, hold on, when it pushes it out, is also going to push the trigger out. So it's, the middle one serves two functions, and then the the far right one here with the little barb hanging off of it, 
that that is put on the sear Come on, focus. Okay, so you can kind of see it's, it's put on the sear right, right there, which pushes the sear toward the hammer, so that when you cock the hammer, let's see if it'll do it. Oh, the grip safety's in my way. Let me take the grip safety out real quick. Okay, so it's pushing against the sear right there. And of course, that's the sear. And then let me reset the hammer. So when it's pushing on the sear, you can it allows you to cock the hammer, and the sear will will lock into the hammer right there, right there locks. And that makes it to where you can't push your hammer up until you pull the trigger. And we pull the trigger, it allows it to the hammer to sling forward. And then uh, I guess you pretty much understand how the grip safety does. The back bat back spring over here sits right in here, and it uh, pushes on the sear spring out. So I mean, it's, I guess that's pretty self-explanatory. Just pushes on the spring like that, and it pushes the grip safety out. So that's that's basically what the uh, sear spring does. It serves actually four functions. So the four functions are um, allowing the sear. It pushes on the sear to lock the sear into the hammer. Number two, it pushes out and up on the disconnector. Three, it pushes the trigger out. Four, and uh, it pushes the grip safety back out toward your palm. When well, if you let go of the gun, it pushes it out. <clears throat> so, because when it pushes it out, this is what happens. Okay, so you have the trigger bar right there, and this, when when your hand is on the grip safety, it is it's up like that, so you can push the trigger. But when you let go of the gun, the sear spring pushes that grip safety where it pivots, and it gets in the way of the trigger bar right there. So it can't go through. So, yeah. Well, anyway, let me get to finally. Let's get to uh, how to make it. It's pretty simple how to make this ear spring. But what you need to do is first find mm -hmm. one of. Well, you can make it out of many things. What I made it out of uh, is these metal bands that wrap around freight or uh, anything you want to wrap these around. It's usually used for industrial purposes though. You can find them at probably Home Depot or, or Lowe's, any hardware store I guess, um, or any place where they have freight. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get one of these and you wanna cut one of the sides to be completely level, flat. So however you wanna do that you can get a piece of paper and line it up and you see a part sticking out and then just mark off with a sharpie or something where to cut and then you're gonna need something called a called a shear and it's just a scissor like tool like this any hardware store sells them I know and uh, you can shear metal just cut metal like scissors and you, you print off the blueprints for the uh, sear spring to scale. And I know some of you are going to ask me how to do that again. Uh, but that's fine. You know, I don't mind. But um, you just look at my first two videos. Those kind of explain it. And then I actually have a separate video that I, met, didn't met, that I made not too long ago that explains how to do that. But um, so I printed out this blueprints the scale to the correct one to one scale which was 50% for me on my Mac and what you're gonna do is cut out the top view like that and then you get your metal and you get some tape 
And by the way, the metal band, uh, it's not the exact correct width. It's the correct width is point point five three two, and this is exactly half an inch, so it's point five zero. But that that'll work. It'll work. So you want to kind of center the cutout over the metal piece. Since it's going to be bigger, you just kind of center it in the middle of it. And line up the bottom of the blueprint, the part that's sticking out right there. Line that up with the bottom part of the metal and just tape that on. Okay, and then you want to put another piece of tape uh, up there somewhere. Just uh, keep it in line. So it doesn't really matter where you put it, I guess. And then what you're going to do is, I'm not going to do it because I might need to use this metal as long, I'm not sure, but you want to cut the metal strip in half to where it's, well, cut it, cut it about up here somewhere because you don't know exactly how long to make this. You would think, well, why don't you just cut it following the um, printout right there? Well, the printout is made to show the top of the spring when it's already made. So if I was to show you this top view of the spring like this, or like that, that's how the how this cutout is. You see how it it's gonna be a little bit longer because if when you stretch when you make these flat, they're gonna extend a little bit longer than if they were bent like they are. So that's why you don't want to follow these lines to cut it because it's gonna you're gonna cut it too short. So just cut it across somewhere up here and you're worried about that part later. And then you're just gonna get your shears and um, follow those lines, cut on those lines and just estimate out here. Just cut until you get to the lines and keep on following the lines to right there, you know, with your shears. And uh, once you do that, you're gonna have something that looks like this, but these are gonna be longer. And then what you're going to do is you get your blueprints and then you line the bottom of this up with that. And you're going to curve the bottom up. I haven't curved mine up yet, but, but you don't have to curve it up yet, but you just, um, it'd be useful if you go ahead and curve it up so that you can line that up. And uh, when you line it up, it's going to show you where to cut your metal off. Uh, so there we go. So my, my springs really kept it shaped pretty good. But uh, So your metal is going to be extending out past uh, here somewhere, probably. And so you just cut it down to, to right where the blueprints say to cut it. You just make a mark and cut it. And then make sure you uh, leave this piece a little bit longer so you can bend it like that. And you're only going to bend half of it, by the way. You can see how, right there, you can see how only half of the uh, top part is bent. That's because it uh, it keeps it it keeps it from falling off the sear pretty much. And I'll just show you real fast what I mean by that. So you have the sear right there, and this will will uh, sit on the sear. Come on, focus. So it'll sit on the sear like that. So part of the part of the spring is going to be on the top of the sear, and then the other part is going to curve around the side yeah. kind of like that Yeah, there we go. You can see that. So 
So, uh, yeah, it's pretty simple to make. You, you, and you, you just bend, before you cut these, you can just bend it into shape uh, before you cut them so that they'll already be in shape. And once you bend them, uh, it'll, they'll pretty much keep their shape. And don't forget about this bend right here. So, yeah, that's how it looks. So, wow, I didn't expect this video to turn out so long. I thought it was going to be shorter, but I guess it was worth it, you know, explaining to you guys how to how that all works and everything. So, next update, I should be having out the. Um, The, the barrel link right in there and the uh, slide catch or slide release whatever you want to call it and both of those are fairly simple although the slide release took a little bit longer of course but yeah I'll show you that next time so I hope you enjoyed and oh, stay tuned for next time